Facebook, and let's begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning again for uh, your provision in our lives. Lord, we thank you that uh, even as we think what Scripture says, that you are preparing something new. As so, Lord, as we look ahead to a new year, we know that you have thoughts aligned for each one of us as a church body. And so we give you praise, Lord. We, we thank you that we celebrated the, the birth of Jesus and Ultimately, what that means for each one of us, uh, you have ultimately provided in a way that only you can, which is sometimes unfathomable for us, but we are so appreciative. And so we love you, Lord, we thank you. And so as we begin this service, Lord, I pray that everything that we say and do today brings glory and honor to you. Help our hearts to be open, our minds to be prepared, and Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I get a do-over because Christmas Eve didn't work, so, okay, so, because, just a second, I'm already nervous enough, <laughs> okay, so, because of Christ, goodness, we have hope, I guess it doesn't matter which order I do. Okay, and so, and because of Christ, we also can have peace. Oh, that flame's big. Maybe I should have lit the furthest one away from me first. Instead of doing it the order I'm doing it in. Regardless. Okay, so, and because of Christ, we can have joy. And love. Okay, so, I'm nervous. Okay, so, I'm, I'm nervous, I don't ever do this, but, okay, so, Christ has come, um, our little one that we had there, um, really he came a long time ago, um, but we get the opportunity to kind of celebrate his birth um, around Christmas, so, so thankful for him and everything he's done for us. But so I get to read Psalms 98. Okay. So, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyful to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth 
in song, rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. See, sorry, I messed up. Okay, so let the sea roar and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteous, with righteousness, he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. I have several announcements for you this morning. Some are new. Uh, one is that the January calendar is out. It's up here towards the front. I think there's maybe some in the back as well. I encourage you to take one of these. Uh, this next week we're going to talk about uh, the scriptures in there are uh, Advent continued. And then beginning on the week of the 8th, there are scriptures in there that go along with our new Bible study. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, we're getting ready to start a new year, so this year I really want you to do something a little bit different. Uh, as you read the scriptures, I know like, um, you know, Psalms 98 that Jessica just read to you is the reading for tomorrow. Uh, it might be long, so you don't have to write all of it out, but I'd like you to get a, a little spiral book or some paper or something and start to write some of the scriptures out. And you'll say, well, Pastor, I, I can't write very well. That, that's okay. It's not the point. Uh, if you read that and you write that, it's going to start making a huge impact in your, in your life. So I'm not asking you to write like the next day is Matthew 1. If, if you want to, that's great. You don't have to write all of Matthew 1. 
you can take that story about uh, Joseph and his part of the birth there with uh, 18 through 25 and just write out four or five verses. And if you start to write those out, and I say in like a spiral notebook or something, you can keep throughout the year, you're going to see a huge impact in your life from transferring it from just reading it to starting to write it. Okay, so, so here's your challenge already. You have something, you have homework for 2024, right? But it, it's really going to, it's, it's going to be impactful. It's going to be good for you. So I, I really encourage you to, to do it. I encourage you to take part in it um, as much as you can. Uh, I think you're really going to see a, a difference. So anyway, I encourage you with that. Uh, today is the last of the old year. Tomorrow is the new year. Tomorrow brings on the first week of January, which means we have food pantries at North and at Pomona both this week uh, from 1 to 4. Uh, there's a delivery out at Pomona this week, uh, so Terry will be letting you know about that. Uh, then Friday we have harvesters this week, so we can always use help at the pantries. We can always use help at harvesters, and uh, here we go right into 2024. Uh, so that's uh, the beginning of that. Uh, the next thing we have on there is, this is our Bible study we're going to begin in January. It's called Gospel-Shaped Work. Uh, it goes along with the studies that we had went through last year. This is the last uh, session in that. And it's going to talk about how to help us to take what we have and be able to use that in our workplaces, in our school places. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, good, because I'm retired. I don't have to do this. No, uh, wherever you are, you get to use it in those places as well. So even if you're retired, this study is for you. And so there's books up here. We're going to start next Sunday morning with the first session. Uh, we'll be in Sunday school with it. We'll be in uh, the sermon time here. We'll be on Wednesday night Facebook Live. Uh, it, it's a good study, so I encourage you to, to help take part in this. It was really unique of this as well because as we came through the fall... Uh, I had several people say, boy, it would really be nice if we could have some kind of help to teach us how to take this to our workplace or take this to our school. And I thought, man, if you only knew what's coming, here, here it is. Uh, so a Emily was one of them. She's not here yet, but uh, she's at her daughter's today. But uh, she was saying, you know, that'd be nice. And again, it's not just for work. It's, it's where you're at. Uh, and so it's, it's starting to Take the gospel in your life and then move it into uh, a daily routine. Anyway, so that's uh, coming up. Be sure and take a book with you this morning. Uh, if there's none left, we'll get some more. Uh, if you did not get a peace jar, uh, we encourage you to take one of these. Uh, this jar, uh, if you were caroled to, you got one, but you might want another one. It has a scripture on it. All of them are a little bit different. It has... Uh, glitter inside there as you shake it up if you're troubled if you're sorrowful if you have some circumstance you're dealing with you take the jar and you shake it up you read the scriptures and then you watch the glitter kind of settle in the jar which takes a while but enables you to know that that God loves you and he has the situation under control you may not see how he's working it but he is and so it's kind of a neat little uh, mindset concept for you to, to take and uh, utilize those at home as well. Bible study uh, resumes tomorrow night. Uh, downstairs, the men are in the fellowship hall. The ladies are in the room in the back, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, you're always invited, men and women, to come to this. It's, uh, Trey is wanting to know when he gets to come to the sirs class. Sir is in the men's. And I said, well... Just not yet. And so, so he's ready to come. So we just need the rest of you guys to think the same thing that Trey thinks, right? Uh, he, he's wanting to come. Anyway, it's at 6 o'clock, usually over by about 7.30. Uh, we begin back up. Uh, we've got a couple extra books for the men if you, if you need one, if you want one. Uh, same way with the ladies. Uh, they're going through a study called uh, uh, Praying the Names of God or something like that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you're invited to that. All right, next thing is the Fay Madison Scholarship Forms are out there. You know, there's some here. That may be where they're all at. Anyway, if, if you're, you're part of North, if you're part of the White House, we shared with them this morning. If you're going to higher education, some type of, of growing in your uh, 
work related, I don't know, whatever. Secondary education, that's the word. Post-secondary education, yeah. Uh, pick one of these up. The scholarship forms are due back the 15th uh, till the, the scholarship committee can get a, ready and get them all uh, set and get going. So pick up your form today. Uh, that's dropping some money in the piggy bank because uh, Faye Madison uh, gave years ago so that you could have a chance to go to school today. So what a, what a blessing that is. The annual business meeting uh, will be January 28th. We'll be following the service here. So uh, make plans to attend to that. It's going to let you know all the things that took place back in 2023, way a long time ago, right? Uh, and so we'll have uh, reports and things in there for that. Uh, I'm not sure if we have new business at this point, but anyway, it'll be there. Uh, man up. Man, I encourage you to start thinking about going to this as well. Um, it, it's not about taking a huge group. It's about taking the group that God wants us to take and, uh, and be a part of. We go up Friday. Uh, March 1st, um, spend the night there in Salina at the conference center. Uh, there's, there's meals, there's uh, different things, there's classes, there's worship. Uh, and then on Saturday, and we're back home usually by about 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. Uh, it's really a good chance for you to grow in your relationship with the other guys as well as with the Lord. So uh, I encourage you to start thinking about that. Last year it was $90. I'm not sure of the cost. If the cost is a factor, be sure and let me know because we want you to go. Made Alive is March 10th. Uh, that's going to be our resurrection time of like the Christmas setting when we had Old Fashioned Christmas. We'll, we'll decorate up in here. We'll have special uh, related to uh, the resurrection of Jesus uh, um, with him. And uh, we'll invite the other churches back and we'll have snacks and just a time to kind of get together. Uh, it's kind of neat. We, we caroled. We didn't get to many. Uh, I think we talked about as much as we uh, caroled to several people. But Patty said something that was uh, just sparked my interest and sparked my mind. She said, uh, a couple years ago, well, pre-COVID, before COVID, we went resurrection caroling. And that was really unique, and it really surprised a lot of our neighbors. And she said, boy, we need to do that again. So we're going to do that again. Uh, uh, somewhere in March there, we're going to invite you to come and resurrection carol with us. So uh, anyway, that'll be the 10th, uh, 4 to 6. If you want to sing a special... Uh, let me know. We'll put you on the on the docket on the on the bulletin, and um, we're going to sing songs in here just of His resurrection up from the grave. He arose and different things. So uh, we invite you to that. Okay. The mission team coming. Uh, <laughs> Shelly said this morning uh, they'll, they'll be here before you know it. I mean, we think that's a long ways out, but we know how fast things go. So they'll be here. Start praying for that. Uh, we're going to minister through the food pantries at both places. So. Uh, it's uh, unique of that as well. And then the last thing is the serve day, uh, which is the 22nd. So uh, we invite you to take part in that. I think um, announcement, that's it. Uh, prayer concerns are on your bulletin this morning. Uh, we do have several that are uh, not feeling well under the weather. Um, I want you to pray for uh, Janet Humiston, uh, which is Cameron Destiny, Cameron's uh, grandmother, uh, she's in the hospital, uh, been sick. She'd fallen a few times, and so after she comes out of the hospital, maybe tomorrow or so, she's going to rehab for um, some um, uh, rock, okay, she's going to, help me out, Rock Creek for rehab. There we go. That's what I was trying to say, but I needed Shelly to help me with it. So, so pray for her with that. Um, the others on the list there, we encourage you to look on those and, and pray for those on a, on a daily basis. Uh, we do have a card from uh, Scott and Tanya Elrod. It says, thanks everyone for the support and love you gave us when uh, my mother passed away. Uh, thanks to the ladies for attending the funeral. It means a lot to us. Uh, thanks the church family for the uh, generous donation of the Gideon Bibles. Uh, so very thankful. It was so good to see everyone uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, love, Scott and Tanya. And so with that this morning, uh, if you would join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, again this morning that we can come to you. And Lord, whether it's for physical healing, whether it's for emotional strength, whether it's for uh, a multitude of things, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, reveal yourself to us. Lord, we know that you hear our prayers. We know that you answer them in a way that's according to your will. And so let us see that, Lord. Help us to understand what you're doing. Help us to see 
Help us to be a part of that and, Lord, uh, uh, rejoice in it. So, Lord, again this morning, we thank you uh, for the way you provided for each one of us throughout this past year. Lord, we ask that you give us insight and direction as we begin a new year in 2024, that we look to you for, for purpose and guidance, uh, for strength and help. And really, Lord, help us to be able to follow you obediently. And so we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you stand this morning, we're going to sing Joy to the World. And if you have a bulletin, you see we're going to sing Joy. Oh, yes, I didn't forget this. This is Scarlett. She's on your prayer list. Thank you. Yes. And uh, she just had surgery. Uh, she, she's coming out. Uh, she's home now, right? Uh, they did surgery on her on her palate, and she had, that could be the last one. That's going to be her last surgery. So it's been kind of cool to be able to see these little ones as they've grown. And I've got each one of the pictures on the computer so I can see them in their progress. And so uh, we get different ones from the from uh, from from crew to to Annie to Asher uh, to Maya to Scarlett. And this is the latest one for Scarlett. So yes, thank you for pointing me out. Uh, I need help back there. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes. All right, so stand this morning. We're going to sing Joy to the World. And as we sing this, you're going to notice in your bulletin you get to sing it twice a day. That's not a misprint. Uh, you're going to sing it, and then you're going to, we're going to talk about it, and then you're going to get to sing it again. It's going to give you a, a whole new light in the way you sing it as we go. chapter 3, and we're going to talk this morning about the wonders of his love. You just sang that in the uh, Joy to the World song. Um, we have children's, oh, okay, yes, we have children's message this morning, or children's church, yeah, not message, church. They're all giving high fives as they go out the aisle. Boom, there you go. All right. And they're still coming. That's a good sign, right? Yes. Everybody wave. See what you're missing out? You could be going in there. But now you're a captive audience here, so you get to stay. As they're, as they're leaving, um, I do want to remind you, if you are a, a 
chairman of a committee from last year, be sure and get a report turned in here in the next uh, week or so so we can compile a list of things that were done. Just a short little thing about what your committee did for uh, 2023 so we can have that in the annual report um, as we uh, look forward to seeing what you were a part of, right, in 2023. All right, so again, we're going to talk about the wonders of his love. This is kind of Advent continued. We went through Advent the last several weeks. We uh, have the candles lit. We had uh, uh, the Christ candle lit Christmas Eve. Uh, Jessica got to stand in front of you and be scared twice this year uh, because uh, we have so much trouble with microphones when it is wet and humid, and there's not much we can do about that. Uh, we have we have great issues with that. And if you didn't know, Christmas Eve, uh, it was wet and humid. Uh, not like many years, but this year was quite different. So um, she was not able to be heard unless you were right here in the front row. So I said, uh, hey, would you like to do the one on Sunday morning? And she said, I was afraid you were going to ask that. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, sure. So uh, we're able to get that through this morning. So we've got the candles lit. The Christ candle is the reason for all of those things. And it's the wonders of his love. And so we're going to be in 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 1. And then we're going to talk about the wonders of God's love. Scripture says, see how very much our Father loves us. And so the, John, the apostle, is really, he's speaking to you and I today too. And, and even though it says us, I want you to kind of insert that word you. Uh, see how very much our Father loves you. For he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. And so with that, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, again this morning, we, we thank you uh, for the provision of love. Lord, we thank you that you don't just say it, but that you demonstrated it, that we can see it, that we can understand it, that we can really be a part of it. And not only that we can receive it, Lord, but we can share that same love as well. Lord, we thank you for the gift the ultimate gift that came from you. And Lord, it was a gift that came with circumstances for Jesus. That he was to give his life, his blood that we shed for the remission of our sins. And so Lord, we thank you this morning that we can reflect on that. We can look back to that time. We know what took place. And Lord, that those things were for each one of us. And so we give you praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So joy. Everybody say joy. Now say that with a smile, right? Joy. Right? So, so Joy to the World was written by, by Isaac Watts in, in 1719. And it's a, it's a really unique song, Joy to the World, right? Um, we sing it at Christmas time. Uh, we might sing it a time or two other throughout the year, but... We sing it at Christmas time, and, and actually, Joy to the World is the most popular Christmas carol throughout the year. In North America, it's printed and copied more than any of the other Christmas carols that it is. But it's interesting, Joy to the World speaks nothing about the birth of Jesus. It speaks nothing about the virgin birth. And actually, when he wrote this carol, it was in reflection to Psalms 98, which Jessica read this morning, which is actually on your calendar for you to read tomorrow. It's on a reflection of his readings of Psalms 98. Uh, Isaac Watts was a, a preacher, pastor, songwriter uh, of old, and he wrote that. It was really more as a reflection about the second coming of Christ. We sing it now as a Christmas carol. That's one of the major ones that we do. And so that's why you get to sing it before the message this morning. And then after we go through, you're going to be able to reflect on that and be able to sing it 
again. And you'll get to sing it really differently the second time because you're going to know a little more of the history and, and why we even have it and what it's about. In verse 1, in Joy to the World, it makes us think that they had no room for the pregnant couple, and that's what we, we think of when we sing that. Verse 2 reminds us of the message that the angels brought to the shepherds and how they were to go and see what had taken place. But verse 3 kind of takes us to the point of the curse. And the fall of mankind in Genesis chapter 3. And then in verse 4, we think about the advent and the wonders of his love. But as we get to see it later, it's kind of unique because we equate it to the first coming. And Isaac Watts wrote it in a way to be about the second coming. And so we celebrate the fact that he did come, but now as children of God, we look forward to his return, and so it is joy to the world. One day, that will take place. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be years to come, we don't know, but we know that it's going to happen because it's a promise of God. And so verse 4 then is going to be our focal point for the message today about the wonders of of his love. Now the word wonder, everybody say wonder, is a feeling of surprise and it's mingled with admiration. That's what the dictionary says. It's caused by something beautiful, something unexpected, something unfamiliar, and something unfathomable. Something that we just can't quite get a grip on, but yet we knew and know that it took place because of God. And so as we begin this morning, I want you to think, have you ever seen something that was so remarkable that it left you speechless? Now think about that. Think about what that time would be. What was so remarkable? When, uh, when my parents were still alive and I talked to them about, you know, uh, what was it like when I was born? And my mom said, well, they put me in the hospital and they knocked me out, um, woke up, uh, I had you. Uh, three days later, I went home and, and that was kind of it. Well, where was dad? Well, he was sitting out in the waiting room because he couldn't go back in to, to see anything that took place. And so um, it, it was just like that. Now, that was way different for me because I got to see each one of those children being born and, 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 and cut the cord to separate them from the old life into the new life. And so it was really unique. If you want to talk about something that was unfathomable, uh, unspeakable, uh, amazing, that you know without a shadow of a doubt that it was God, that was one of those things. I mean, it was just the most amazing thing. And so I had one. That would obviously be one. Now, also, you know, I have uh, set at the cabin uh, in the upper part of Michigan, and I have watched the sunrise come up over the lake. Now, granted, I've not seen that very many times, but I have saw the sun come up. More, I've saw the sun go down. Now you know where I'm going, right? So... Uh, most times, Shelly's out there by herself. A couple times years ago, I went out to see it. Uh, it was real. The sun really did come up. It just didn't turn on. And it was really neat to see. Uh, yeah, when I got up about 10, you know, it was like, oh, yeah, there's the sun. That's great. Uh, but really unique to see it coming up. The, the place that we uh, rent the cabin at, it, it's on a big lake. And so you can see the sun come up in the morning. And the sun just hovers over the whole thing. And by the end of the evening, you can see the sun go down on the same lake. I mean, it's, it's the way it's setting. And so it's really a unique setting. And so I've seen the sun come up a couple times. But I've seen the sun go down lots of times. And it's beautiful to see it go down. And, and as the sun goes beyond the horizon and you still have kind of that light and 
You start to look up and you can see the stars in the sky. It, it's amazing. And then you see kind of the, the Milky Way through the midst of it as the, as the sun just continues to go and the darkness comes on. And then as it gets dark, if you can stand the mosquitoes, because there's about as many mosquitoes in Michigan as there are stars in the sky. Um, if you can stand the mosquitoes, the stars are amazing. It's beautiful because... There's really no uh, light around you. There's no cities to give off that glow. There's no street lights. Across the lake, you might see a couple lights here and there of some other cabins or houses or something. But for the most part, there's no light. So when it gets dark, it's dark. And the stars are just the most beautiful thing. It's just amazing to think about uh, seeing those and thinking about... God saying to Abraham that, that you would have descendants as many as the stars in the sky. And, I mean, you can see so much more in the stars when there's, there's no light, you know, that's kind of hindering that view. So those are just a few of the things that, for me, are really uh, unexpected. It's, it's unfamiliar. It's unfathomable. It's something that is so remarkable that it's just God. And so I'm sure there's something in your life that you can think of. So that's what I want you to think about this morning as we go through this time. The, the wonders of his love. Something that's unexpected. Something that's unfamiliar. Something that's unfathomable. Uh, for those of you that listen to contemporary music, uh, Christian music, the, Chris Tomlin has a song, the God of wonders beyond this galaxy. And so it's really unique to think God has and knows everything. He's, he's sovereign. He knows you individually as well as each time span as well. And so what I want you to think about is, is a time that is so remarkable that it left you speechless. And then I want you to think, what if you could have been there at Jesus' birth? Would you have saw it? Would you have went to see it? Would you have missed it? Were you prepared or unprepared? And, and even like today, we, we look forward to his return. And so are you prepared for that or are you unprepared? I mean, that makes me think, uh, it, it's always been a, just a unique spot in my in my heart and in my life of of the shepherds. You know, uh, I shared last week, week before. You know, they're out there in the field watching their flocks by night. You know, they're hanging out, chewing on some straw, looking up at the stars, thinking, "Man, remember when uh, we don't remember? Think about you know God telling our father Abraham that he would have descendants as many as these stars." And and I'm like one of those, right? And so and then all of a sudden, burst in the scene is this angel. Gabriel that says, you know, uh, don't be afraid. Okay, well, check that box because it's already happening, right? Uh, you coming into my little realm here has brought some fear into my life. But he said, don't be afraid. For today in the city of David has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And you're to go and see him, and he's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in a manger. And go and see. And so then all of a sudden, not only is the one angel there, but a whole multitude jump in and they say, glory to God in the highest, right? And it's like, uh, now wait a minute, what happened to that don't be afraid thing? Uh, because what are all you doing wh where I'm at? But it's unique to think that they, after the angels left, they jumped up and they went to see what God told them to see. Now, if you, bless you, you look on the screen this morning, um, that word see is much bigger. I wanted to make sure that you could see it, amen? And you can see it's a little bigger. It may not be in your Bible that way. Uh, yours may say behold or see, but it's meaning the same thing. And so what if you were able to go and see the manger, the Christ child? What if you just stopped by for just a, a little bit? 
just walking through Bethlehem and you happen to go down that little path that led you right to where the manger was. If you saw all that child laying there, would you realize how much God loved you to send him into the world just for you? Now, he'd done that for every one of us, but he also done it individually just for you. Now, what if you were to consider this morning then that the Heavenly Father delivered this greatest gift to a sin-fallen world so that it could be reconciled to Him. And in the midst of that sin-fallen world is, is you. And so that's kind of the sense that we, we have there when in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, He says, See how very much our Father loves us. Loves you. He calls us his children, and that is what we are. But we're the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. And so not everybody recognizes the fact that Jesus comes. Not everybody recognizes the fact that God loves you. And if you don't hear anything else this morning, I want you to hear that God loves you. He loves you in a unique way. Maybe something that you can't even fathom. And he, he loves you so much that he would send his son into the world, not just to be born as a babe, but that he would come on a mission, and that mission was to die in your place. That his blood would be shed so that you could have forgiveness of sin. That's what Jesus came for. And so it opens with that verse, see, or behold, whichever version you have. And right there, really, uh, the Apostle John is grabbing you by the shoulders and he's shaking you and he's saying, look, God loves you. He loves you so much. And what he wants you to do is to see, maybe with a new set of eyes, he wants you to focus on Jesus. It's through Jesus that we're reconciled back to God into a relationship with him that, that's amazing. And what he's saying is, see, something big can happen through a relationship with God. Amen? Yeah, that's, that's it. And that's what he's saying. He not only loves you, he not only says he loves you, he demonstrates his love for you that he would send his son into the world when you were still a sinner, <coughs> excuse me, that he would come to die in your place and be a substitute for you so that you could spend eternity with him. That's love. Now, John says, you are a child of God. And have you ever considered what it means to be a child of God? Maybe you've never thought about what it means to be a child of God. Maybe you don't even care what it means to be a child of God. But to be a child of God means, you know, we, we talked last week about John 3.16 and, and God giving his one and only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And it's not just knowing that God existed in the form of Jesus, because we have proof of that, but it's that you believe it. So that believe means to, to hang on to, to cling to, to grab a hold of, and, and not just for today, but that's for eternity. You're grabbing onto that thought that Jesus came for you so that you could have eternal life with him. And so have you stopped to think about that? Because to be a child of God means that you inherit everything that Jesus has. You were once a sinner who was that enmity you're an enemy with god and yet he loved you so much that he sent his son into the world so that you might have life 
and life abundantly and life eternal with him and as a co-heir with Christ, as a child of Christ, you have all the blessings that Jesus has. In Romans chapter 8, verse 17, the Apostle Paul is kind of saying the same thing to those in, in Rome, the church in Rome there. And he says, and since we are his children, that means we're co-heirs with Christ. We're a child of God. He said, we are heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we're to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Now, we all like the good things, right? It's those things that cause us to suffer or, or give us pain or a, a circumstance that we are unfamiliar with or unlike. Those are things we like to push aside and just say, I, I just want to be free from this. Right, I want to be relieved from this. Just, just carry on with something else here. But the scripture says, because we're co-heirs, everybody say co-heir, we have a privilege of relating to the Father as Jesus does. You fast forward to uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which will be fast forward as we go through the next few months, but um, we're going to come to the point of, of the curtain. You know, as we, as we came through the Advent this year, we talked about the, the different places back in the day of, of Christ where the temple had different places where different people could come. Some had to be across the street just looking in. Some were closer, some were closer. Some got to come on in. And, and then there was this one high priest once a year who could go in and then behind this big curtain... He could go in and atone for the sins of the people, but it had to be repeated because it was just a foreshadow of what Jesus was coming to do. But at the point of Jesus' death on the cross, that curtain, which is said is like one of them big old phone books, right? And so kids today is like, what is a phone book? Uh, it's like a Sears Christmas catalog. And they don't know what that is either. Uh, <clears throat> but... It's this big old book that this thick, you know, that has all those names in it. And that curtain was huge and it, was, it said it was rent. It was ripped from top to bottom, meaning that God was now opening up a way through Jesus so that you and I could have a relationship with him and become co-heirs with Christ. Co-heirs. And so that means that we inherit... Everything that Jesus has. All the blessings, all the honor, all the glory, and the suffering. Now it's interesting, uh, not on your screen this morning, but in Luke chapter 18, it talks about the rich young ruler. Right? He's having a conversation with Jesus. And the rich young ruler says, what must I do to inherit? You don't do anything. Neither do we. You don't do something to get an inheritance. If you do, then it's not an inheritance. Inheritance means you are a, a part. It means you're, you're being in the family. It's a matter of being. Being in God's family means you get to be a co-heir, which means you get the inheritance that Jesus has. So for the rich young ruler, it's not about doing, it's about what Jesus did. And that's what we need to grasp. So being in Christ means that we, we share in all his blessings, but we also share in those sufferings. And we've got this wrong concept in our world today that we think that when we become Christians that we are free from those things, right? Uh, in Jesus, I'm immune from pain and sorrow. But that's, that's not the way it works. And Jesus gives us the, the right example of that. We're not immune from temptations. We're not immune from trials. We're not immune from suffering. One day when he comes back and his glory is fulfilled and his kingdom is reached, then those things will be taking place. But that's, that's in the future. That's future glorification. But as far as God sees it, it's all in one package to be a co-heir. 
So you receive the blessings, but then there's also sufferings. And sometimes in our flesh, it's really hard because, you know, we want the good things, but we don't want to suffer. So we pray, Lord, just take me out of this suffering. Take me out of this circumstance. When all along, he's trying to do something in and through you during that time. And so we want to fast forward, and I'm, I'm no different. I do too. Uh, I, I've told you many times that uh, we've had times in our life, in Shelly and I's life, where I'm just like, Lord, I've learned this lesson. Let's move on, right? And he says, well, you haven't learned it really well yet, so you're going to stay in there for a while. It's about learning what he wants for us. And so God is a God of wonders. Everybody say wonders. And so the Bible is full of accounts from the beginning to the end about how God has done amazing things for his people over the years. Now we call it miracles. To us it's amazing. To God it's just that's who he is. That's his character. That's his nature. And the book of Psalms alone is just filled with those kind of things where David has, has fallen into temptation. Uh, he's got uh, sin rampant in his life. He's got people chasing him, all these different things. And he's cried out to God and God provides for him. And he's able to see that. And so that's what I'm trying for you to grasp this morning is seeing how God has worked in your life. Maybe even in this past year, 2023, seeing what he's done will encourage us to see what he's going to do. We're reconciled, we're redeemed through Jesus so that we can see how much God really loves us. And so God continues to do wonders. He continues to do Amazing things that are far beyond what we can grasp, what we consider, what we can fathom at times, right? But what he's doing is revealing his presence and his love to you. And so that's, that's what God's wonders are about. They're beyond human understanding because that's who God is. He, he, he doesn't work on our time schedule or the way that we think and act. Even though many times he, he foretells us what he's going to do, we miss it until we really see the things that, that he's done. And he demonstrates his, his limitless power. He demonstrates his presence, his protection, his sovereign purposes in our lives and everything god does is designed to draw people out of the darkness and into his marvelous light and so that's the thought on advent you know when we started several weeks ago each one of the candles were unlit and we're really living in a time of, of darkness and then we lit the candle of hope and it brings a little light because we can think back and see God's promises and know that they're for us. And so it starts to bring a little light into our lives and then peace. And so Jesus offers peace that we can't even really fathom at times because it's not what the world has. And then there's joy. And joy is in those circumstances even when we think it's suffering, we can still find joy. And then God presents that last candle of, of love to us. And so the circle is complete, but the center candle of Christ is still not lit. And though in the midst of that, then on Christmas Eve, we lit that candle of Christ where God demonstrated his love to us. He didn't just say it, but now he's showing it to us. And he didn't just come as a as a babe to look beauty, pretty, not beauty, pretty. So, so all the people and all the women would go, ooh, and oh, and a little baby. And, and, you know, my wife always does that. Every time we see somebody with a baby, she's like, let me see them. Oh, they're so cute. And just like a, it's a little bald guy. <laughs> I see them all the time. They're all the same, right? And she's like, ooh, oh, let me hold him. He could be dirty. Uh, if you get him, then you're responsible, 
And so uh, just remember that, right? But it's not just about that. It's about what Jesus really came for. And he really came as a substitute for you and I. And so God might have loved the whole world, which he does, but he loves you individually in a unique way. And he did that specifically for you. And when it comes down to it, most people, and really the older you get, and I'm, I'm really understanding this more and more as the days go by, the most important things in life aren't things at all. It's the relationships that you have. It's the people that you know, and it's the people that you're around, and what God has placed into your life. And in reality, God has placed into all of our hearts and our lives this desire for relationships. And we desire relationship from one another, but ultimately we desire relationship from Him. And in, until we find that relationship with Him, we're going to seek that void and try to fill that with everything we can. And the world's going to tempt us to go in all kinds of ways to try to fill that. And he's saying this is the only way it can really be fulfilled is through, is through me. And he gives us that. And that desire is intended to be met through a relationship with Jesus that we can be reconciled to him and to one another. In that first John, it's like five chapters. If you want something good to read today or tomorrow, you could really sit down and read that. It's not very long. And it really teaches us how to have relationships with one another and how important relationships are, both here and now <clears throat> and in eternity. And the purpose of John's letter is to Help us to understand that as a child of God, you need a relationship with the Father. Now, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John is written so that we would believe who Jesus is and what he really came to do, and he did it for you. And in 1 John, it was written so that we would understand the purpose of relationships with him and with one another. That's what I'm saying. It's a really good, it's a good read. And so maybe this morning you're living what it means to be a child of God. Maybe you've thought about it and, and you're just right on that and you're just all about it. Maybe you've pondered what it means to be a child of God. You know, Mary pondered all these things in her heart and maybe you've thought about it. Or maybe you've never thought about what it means to be a child of God. But through the birth of Jesus, his death and resurrection, being called a child of God isn't just a name. And so if you go back to that, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, he says, See how much your Father loves you. That's what it's about. Because of Jesus, you don't have to earn your place in God's family. You don't have to wonder about if you're in his family. You don't have to talk God into having a relationship with you. You don't have to wonder where you belong. Through Jesus, you are a child of God. He's opened up the door so you can be a co-heir with Christ. And so God sent his one and only world, uh, son into this world, into a broken world, to claim us as his own and to call us his children. And what he's asking us is to believe the truth about Jesus, to grasp it, to hold on to it, to cling to it, not only for today, not only for next year, the new year, but through eternity. 
And so at Christmas time, we remember that Jesus is the ultimate gift. He's the ultimate gift from the loving Father to each one of us. And like any good giver of gifts, he's excited when you receive it. We had Christmas at the house Christmas morning in Trent, the youngest one of Katie's. He was he was pretty cool, and so he's like, we went around the circle again. You could open up a package, and when it comes to him, he's he's like ripping a piece off, and then he's got to go take it and put it in the trash or a bag, and then he's got to rip another piece off, and it's like, dude, just rip into that and just you know, no, he's got to take it and. You know, piece by piece and put it in the trash before he ever gets to the box. And so so his whole point was just, I'm not so much, you know, he was excited about some of the things that he got, but it was, he was, it was just about the anticipation. He was, just, he was just getting into it. And so many times in our lives, we can just get to the point where, we're, where we are more concerned with just how we do it than what's inside. And have you ever gave to somebody that you were so excited for them to open it you're more excited than they are right and so you're like sitting on the edge of your chair and you're like oh if i i'll just rip that open for you if you want me to help you know come on let's just get into that you know and so just all excited about being the gift giver i I really feel that's the way god is he is so excited about the gift that he has for you in jesus that he can't wait for you to open it and we're sitting here going there's a piece. Get over here and put it in the trash. I can get another piece. Got to go put this in the trash. And we're never getting to what it is that's the ultimate gift. And God's on the edge of his seat going, hey, what are you doing? Right? What are, you, what are you doing? Get back here in the box. Get into that and see what it means to have a relationship with me. This is the greatest gift you could ever have, and you're piddling around with the wrapping. And we do that. We get so sidetracked. And God is just waiting on us to have that to take place. And so earlier in the message, I said, I want you to think of something that you've received that's so great, or you've seen so great that makes you speechless that you just couldn't even come up with words for it i gave you some examples of some of the things that were in my life and i want you to think about the depth of god's love for you the extreme measures he went to offer you life And now, can you see the wonders of his love in a new way? See, from the, from the beginning of time through all eternity, God has loved you, he loves you, and he will love you. And we talked, I, I believe it was last week, just about those different words of of love and how we throw them all into a basket and just say I I love this and I love that and and that's not the way the Bible was written because in Hebrew and Greek there are very specific words and God loves you that specific way he didn't just group you into a whole bunch and say I just love North Baptist Church oh I just love them he does But he loves each one of you individually in a very unique way. And he's created you and he's given you the ultimate gift and he's asking you now to unwrap that gift and use it. And this is the the last day of 2023. You're going to reflect back and see the things that have taken place, good and bad, joyful and sorrowful, and you're going to move forward into 2024. And it's just going to be, when you go to bed, when you wake up tomorrow, it's just going to be 2024. 
But in God's timing, so many things can happen when we will just release ourselves to Him. And so my prayer for you is that you're able to see the wonders of God's love in a new way. On that first Christmas morning, on that first Advent, God broke through the loneliness. He broke through the darkness. And He broke through the waiting and dwelt among us. Scripture says, Emmanuel, God with us. It's amazing to think about who God is and what He does and what He wants and His greatest desire is for a relationship with with you and I. Not a relationship through the pastor. Not a relationship through your deacon board. But a personal relationship with you. And so the wonders of His love. And so this Christmas season, I don't want you to miss the gift that was given for you. And you might say, well, Pastor, I accepted that gift years ago. And and maybe you did, and that's good. But what I want you to see is that that gift is not just for you. As speechless and unfathomable, uh, all those things the way you received it, you are to give that gift to others. They, they really need to see Jesus in you. And I don't know about you, but for people to see Jesus in me, there might need to be some tweaking going on. And so we do that by just allowing Him, through obedience, His presence in us. And so maybe, as we've talked about the wonders of God's love this morning, God has spoken to you. Maybe you need to uh, accept Jesus for the first time. Maybe you need to uh, join the church, be baptized. Maybe you need to just sit and contemplate just how much He really loves you. And that His love means that even in the good times and the bad, even through the joyful times and the sorrow, God still loves you. And I don't know what season you're in, but whatever season it is, God is still working in you to perfect you to be able to share Jesus with others. And so if God has spoken to you this morning, I encourage you to come as we sing. And we're going to sing Joy to the World. And hopefully this time you will see that song in a, in a new light. We sing it as a Christmas carol, and it is. And so we sing a Christmas carol... 20, 30 minutes ago, Joy to the World. And now you're going to sing Joy to the World because you're anticipating His return. Joy to the World. Lord, we thank You this morning for who You are. Lord, we thank You for the gift that really comes only through You. And so, Lord, we give You praise. We acknowledge You this morning. And Lord, I pray if there's one in this room that... uh, that needs to step up and do whatever you call them to do, I, I pray you give them the strength to do that. Lord, if there's one on Facebook who's listening, maybe even the, today or the days to come, that you would call them to that same responsibility of stepping up to you. And so, Lord, I pray as we close out this year, we, we look at the things that you have done. We anticipate the things that you will do in the future. And it may not be the way we see it, but it'll be far greater because it's the way you see it. And so, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. If you stand, we're going to sing Joy to the World. And I pray you sing it this time like you never sung it before. Amen.
loves you. And God loves you. I want you to say, God loves me. God loves me. Now, I want you not to say it, but I want you to believe it. Hey, we're going to close out today. Uh, don't forget, if you didn't get a piece of jar, grab that. Get you a calendar. Uh, I really encourage you to start doing that. Uh, take the calendar, read the scriptures, write out a few. You don't have to write out the whole chapter if you don't have time for that. That's okay. But if you write out a few each day, uh, by the time this year comes to a close in 24, uh, it, it's going to make a huge difference in your in your life and in your relationship with Him. Um, John Calendar books. Um, books begin, so I encourage you to, to think about that and be a part of the studies. Um, however it works for you, we just want you to grow in your relationship with the Lord. That's our real uh, intentional thing for you. Um, we got a lot of good things in the works. I'm praying that uh, 2024 is really going to be a, a time of intentionality as we step out and do some things that... Uh, um, we can't do that. Oh, yeah, we can, right? Because God can. Amen? And so we encourage you to continue to give and help the, the ministries that we're a part of. You can do that by giving online. Uh, you can set up one time or, or repeated giving. You can text to give. You can mail a check to the church, put intentional lend on it, on the envelope, and that'll get there. Or you can drop it in the offering plates on Sunday mornings. Uh, they'll help out those, those missions and things that we're a part of and it really helps us to uh, establish and do the things in 2024 that we're uh, set and are excited about being a part of. So I continue to ask you to do that. Um, we're going to close singing the family of God. How can we not close out the year with that, right? And so we're going to sing the, the, the chorus, then the verse, chorus, then the verse, and then we're going to close with the chorus. And when we close with that out, I'm going to close in prayer. You can be dismissed to remember how much God loves you. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joined us with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family, the family. Of God, you will notice we say brother and sister round here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share the tears. Rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. The family of God From the door of an orphanage To the house of a king No longer an outcast A new song I sing From rags unto riches From the weak to the strong I'm not worthy to be here but praise God be long I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God I've been washed in the mountain cleansed by his blood Join us with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Heavenly Father, we 
we thank you uh, that we can be called children of God. Lord, we thank you that it's from your love that establishes that. And so we give you praise this day for that for each one of us. Lord, it's, it's unique that we can call one another brothers and sisters of Christ. And you've opened up that door as well. So help us to live in that throughout this new year. So, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for this day. We pray that everything was said and done brings glory and honor to you, that we understand the depths of your love for each one of us, and that we don't just receive that and hoard that for ourselves, but we give that as a gift to others. So, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hey, don't forget to grab your things this morning as you go, and Happy New Year.